Of course, you know how much I believe in the benefits of intermittent fasting, and I've shared a lot about what it's done for me. I do believe that probably 95% of people could benefit from intermittent fasting. However, intermittent fasting isn't for everyone. I'm going to go over today who should not do intermittent fasting. Hi, Greg Whitmore from Taiyi Mountain Wellness. Welcome back to my channel. Now, if you're new to my channel, I'm honored to have you here. I hope you'll consider subscribing. Hit that bell notification so you'll get notified whenever I put it out a new video. By subscribing, maybe hitting that like button at the end, that helps put my video in front of a lot of people that are trying to improve their health. Okay, so again, intermittent fasting is not for everyone. So I'm going to talk about which people should not consider intermittent fasting or when they should probably consult with their doctor before they start. To do that, let's go to my computer. Okay, so I'm now over on my computer. Again, we're talking about who should not try intermittent fasting. We're going to kind of break it down to those that should absolutely not try it. It's probably too risky. And then others that might want to proceed with caution. So let's get to it. Uh, in that video that I'll put right up here uh, on the screen and make a link uh, in the description below, that recent video I talked about all the benefits of intermittent fasting, I talked about all that it's done for me, and then I had about four pages of benefits. And of course, I'm not going to go over each one again. You can check out that video. But obviously, as you can tell, not only personally has it benefited me, but all the research, um, even though a lot of that research has been done on mice, is so exciting that I really think that a majority of people can benefit from intermittent fasting. So it's just an incredible list of benefits. But as I said in that video, and as I say now, um, there are some people who should not do intermittent fasting. So let's talk about those. If you fit into one of these categories, you probably should either not even think about it right now or um, proceed with caution. So the first one thing I'd like to say is I believe the majority of adults can benefit from intermittent fasting. Research is pretty clear. There's just not many studies that show it, it's harmful. And, I, and again, we have history on our side. We've been fasting for thousands of years. And we were healthier when we were doing more fasting, when we were cleansing and detoxing, and we were forced into some fasting, we were actually a, a healthier um, society. And then when we started getting that unhealthy habits, the unhealthy Western diet or that standard American diet, which I call the sad diet, that's when things really started uh, turning south for us. And we really saw a spike in obesity. And childhood obesity and type 2 diabetes all related to probably too many carbohydrates when we made that switch from high carbohydrates low fat diets um, and eating several meals a day as that's when we started becoming really unhealthy so again I'd say the majority of adults I don't want to put a number on it but I'd almost guess it's in the high 90 percent 95 percent of adults can probably benefit from some form of intermittent fasting I'm not necessarily talking about long-term fasts, but certainly missing a few meals, I know we can almost all um, benefit from. But those that should not try intermittent fasting include kids under 18. Now, I don't push or even talk much about intermittent fasting at all to my high school health class. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't think if we have a, a child, 17, 18 year old, uh, that is really obese, that they couldn't benefit from missing meals or even intermittent fasting under the guidance of a, you know, of a, of a professional, a registered dietitian or a doctor. But in general, I just say, you know what, 18 year olds, teenagers, uh, adolescents, they're developing, their brains developing, their organs are developing, they're growing. So they really need to focus on a, a balanced diet and getting all the proper nutrients uh, that they can. So I don't push it at all. Uh, healthy women trying to conceive. Now we know that uh, 
um, if you're healthy and you start fasting, there can be some disruptions possibly to a menstrual cycle, and that could cause problems in conceiving. But also know that unhealthy women have troubles conceiving sometimes, so intermittent fasting absolutely can help help someone who's unhealthy. Uh, in fact, someone who is having uh, issues trying to conceive, and they might have some other conditions that might be overweight, obese, have some type 2 diabetes, and I absolutely would recommend intermittent fasting to help them. And that may be their solution to being able to conceive. Pregnant women really should not do intermittent fasting. They can put it off until they've had the baby and, and are done breastfeeding. Again, uh, they need all the nutrients. Sometimes their doctors are putting them, or usually their doctors are putting them on multi- vitamins and they don't want to skip meals and miss out on any nutrients not only for them themselves but their developing fetus so get through the pregnancy and then you can start thinking about intermittent fasting if you continue to breastfeed your baby then again it's not a good time to be intermittent fasting so uh, eat a well-balanced diet whole foods keep your nutrient value up while you're pregnant, while you're breastfeeding, and we're done breastfeeding, uh, then you can start intermittent fasting again. That's the beauty about intermittent fasting. It it's, can be a lifestyle, but you can put it off for a while um, if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. Who else should not? Well, people with severe hypoglycemia. So if you've been diagnosed with high, as a hypoglycemic, might have some issues that you have to get healthy uh, control of your blood sugar and usually uh, you've been to a doctor and that hypoglycemia has been diagnosed. So let them know before you ever would start intermittent fasting. But in general, you have to get your blood sugar under control before you want to start uh, intermittent fasting. And it stands to reason that anyone that is really underweight or malnourished are not going to want to skip meals. They're probably already at such a caloric deficit or something's going on where they're severely underweight, that uh, fasting is not really the, the thing for them. So they need to concentrate on, on getting more nutrients, uh, especially the macronutrients, and along with all the uh, vitamins and minerals. Anyone with an eating disorder or maybe a history of eating disorder, whether they formerly had an eating disorder, or maybe there's uh, family members that have had an eating disorder, we know that eating disorders are psychological and we know that someone with anorexia say has a distorted body image it's been proven it's that fasting intermittent fasting does not cause anorexia or an eating disorder in fact again uh, we've been fasting for thousands of years as a human race and yet that didn't lead to eating disorders um, back in in uh, Paleolithic times. So, uh, but it's still something to be concerned with because, again, it's a psych psychological problem. It does uh, involve not eating and fasting, and someone with anorexia uh, or bulimia need to get that under control before they ever think about intermittent fasting. Type 1 diabetic. I'm not saying that uh, all type 1 diabetics should avoid it, but in general, type 1 diabetics are taking insulin to control their uh, lack of insulin. And so this is a lot different than type 2 diabetes. And so type 1 diabetics, unless there's some other underlying conditions that you want to try to get under control with your eating patterns and miss a few meals, you don't want to do that without certainly without consulting your, your doctor because they have to adjust your, your insulin levels. And of course, you'd have to really focus on, on checking your blood sugar even more often. So in general, type 1 diabetic probably shouldn't try intermittent fasting. Now, there's others that uh, intermittent fasting is probably okay, but you should proceed with a little bit of caution. Oftentimes that means uh, consulting your doctor. And remember, your doctor may not know a lot about intermittent fasting. They might not have studied it nearly as much as, say, I have. But uh, so they may give you a little resistance on that. But certainly if there's any medicine or anything that they have to 
to deal with or re-diagnose or continue to test, you want to do it um, with the consultation of your doctor. So that being said, anyone that's on medication, you need to proceed with caution. Okay? If you're on medication, you've been prescribed that medication for a certain reason based on certain test results. And intermittent fasting can change those test results. Um, also, oftentimes your doctor says to take your medication. Your nor maybe you have a, a schedule of taking medication and needs to be taken with a meal. So if you're intermittent fasting, that could disrupt that medication schedule. So proceed with caution. Really work that out with your doctor, and understand that as you intermittent fast and become healthier, your doctor may need to do some more tests and reduce some of the medication. Now that's one of the beauties of intermittent fasting is that we can get off that medication. That's what I did for my autoimmune disease. And I was kind of um, able to do that myself, just kind of slowly cut down on my medication, but that was because I could feel the symptoms, the arthritic symptoms in my hands. But a lot of others, uh, changing medication really has to do with following the test results. So do that with your doctor and be, be careful uh, if you're on medication. Those people that have been diagnosed with gout should proceed with caution. Now, gout generally is caused by a condition when you have too much uric acid. And one of the side effects sometimes of intermittent fasting is, is elevated amounts of uric acid. So you need to do some things. If you have gout and you want to do intermittent fasting to try to take care of weight gain and that sort of thing, then you have to do some things to regulate that so you don't get gout or don't get those high uric acid uh, levels, which also can be a factor in kidney stones. So uh, if you've been diagnosed with gout or have a history of kidney stones, proceed with caution and make sure you're doing things to uh, balance your uric acid levels. Low blood pressure. Now, one of the beauties of intermittent fasting is it can lower your blood pressure. So if someone with high blood pressure, intermittent fasting can, can do wonders for that condition. However, if you already suffer from low blood pressure and you start intermittent fasting, it's, uh, it can cause you to even have lower blood pressure and, and maybe fainting spells. So again, uh, proceed with caution, do this under the guidance of your doctor and uh, be careful when it comes to that. Type two diabetic. Now in the benefits uh, I talk about, one of the greatest benefits is maybe the reversal of type 2 diabetes. So here I'm really talking again about severe type 2 diabetics on pretty heavy doses of, of, of medicine. And again, it kind of goes back to being on medication. As you become successful with intermittent fasting of increasing your insulin sensitivity and your type 2 diabetes starts improving, it'll become necessary that you regulate your medicine and only doctors can do that so if you were to do some intermittent fasting you become more insulin sensitive or to say that another way to become less insulin resistant and you're still taking um, you're still taking medicine to increase your insulin that could uh, play havoc with your blood sugar and so again uh, Type 2 diabetics absolutely should try intermittent fasting, but if you're a severe type 2 diabetic, make sure you're in consultation with your doctor so they can constantly adjust and probably lower or even get you off that type 2 diabetes medication. Okay, so proceed with caution. So those are the reasons you should not try intermittent fasting, and if you are trying it, proceed with caution in, in some of those. So thank you for watching this this video. Uh, a reminder, it would really help if you'd subscribe. If you got some value out of it, give me a thumbs up. That improves the algorithm and YouTube for me. And then hit that bell notification. I'm going to try to put more videos out in 2021 that can help you improve your health. And by hitting that bell notification, you'll get a little email or a little notification on your phone saying that I, that I put one out. Uh, in the meantime, go check out my blog too. Uh, tinymountainwellness.com. I have a lot of articles that go right along with these videos.
All right. Take care. Until next time, I'm gone.